Good morning. Welcome to the morning show. This is Lucas Tracy. It's your host with the most. And today we are going to be going over different MMA news topics. I've been doing a lot of traps in the gym. I've got a nice cup of bone broth this morning, and I have a nice new setup now just to show you guys what's going on. Um, this is how I actually look. My traps are actually no longer going to be hid from the masses. Okay. My traps are looking pretty gnarly. All right. Honestly, this is how I'm, <laughs> so I'm going to be sitting, but anyway, what's up guys. I figured I would do something a little bit different. Uh, this is not really the finished setup. In fact, uh, I can't even stand this. This is horrible. I have a, a new backdrop. The room is not complete yet. The room is definitely not complete. I still have to unbox and put together a shelf. So there's going to be a shelf in the back. And uh, as you can see, there's a bunch of creases in this backdrop. And I don't like the color. I don't like the color at all. And I think I want to go back to something that's a little bit lighter. I know that people don't like the white wall because people say that I blend in, but I figured this is just too dark. Uh, if anything, it's a little bit more blurry. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I guess I'm going to have a shelf and the gaming is back. I fixed my gaming setup or not gaming setup, I should say, but I fixed my capture card and yeah, I'm going to have a, a paper backdrop no creases <laughs> this looks so creepy doesn't it it looks like i'm in a freaking basement right now it looks kind of weird so yeah also the sound in the room is not that good just because um there's no carpet in here so i need to get a carpet but yeah this is the new setup in the making it's definitely not ideal not ideal at all but i should have a new backdrop next weekend and uh, everything should be complete within a I should say a couple of weeks but as far as just the look that should be complete within a week so yeah yeah not the war room I, I definitely need to get a better color in the background I like the white background yeah 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 this is pretty terrible this backdrop this backdrop is is too dark also the creases it just looks I don't know looks weird not not for me so i'm gonna get something just paper and uh yeah we'll have a shelf behind me we'll make it look more like a room but yeah i have a, a, a nicer desk a nicer setup a more comfortable seat and I, I have a nice cup of bone broth as well actually not bad I always buy bone broth. I never actually use it. So I force myself to pour myself a glass of bone broth. So yeah. Hey, thank you for the $10. Thank you so much. Do you think you'd beat MMA guru in an MMA fight to the death? Well, listen, in an MMA fight, I think that he probably beats me up in an MMA fight just because of course the weight class difference. I'm like 175. He's like 250. I'm sure he has a slight reach advantage, maybe a tiny bit of a reach advantage, or I don't know. I've got a, you know, it used to be 79 inches when I was 14 years old. I don't know what the reach is now, but that's an MMA fight. Okay. I don't mean to get dark or anything like that, but I mean, listen, it's really not a game. It's not a game. In a real fight, I think you understand what would happen. Most people know what would happen in a real fight. He might be able to beat me with gloves on, with the referee in the middle, um, with no time limit. I don't think that I'm losing. I'm sorry. But yeah, thank you for the 279. I don't mean to be blunt, but I have to be blunt. Should Manel Cap move up to bantamweight? I think that he should definitely consider it. Manel Cap should definitely consider moving up to bantamweight. Because, I mean, this is like the 50th time he's pulled out and you got Manel Caps saying things like, uh, you know, this is the first time I've ever pulled out of a fight. Usually it's my opponent. Dude, you pulled out last time. Or technically he didn't pull out, 
but Mateus Nicolau refused to fight him when he missed weight by like three pounds. Manel Cap is becoming a pullout king, honestly. He is literally becoming a pullout merchant. He pulled out of his last fight. I'm fucking counting that as him messing up the fight completely. He missed weight by like three pounds. Yeah, it, it kind of sucks that Mateus Nicolau didn't want to fight him, but that's what it is. You're supposed to make weight. He's injured. He has a serious injury. Fair enough. Live stream, but anyway, we were just talking about Manel Cap. And I think it's a good thing that he pulled out. I think that you shouldn't show up to fights when you're severely compromised. Uh, why would you do that? These guys fight twice or three times a year. Even guys that want to stay active, they're getting injured left and right. If you're only going to fight two or three times a year, and you know the, the, the difference between a win or a loss could be a title shot or a number one contender's fight or taking three steps back, you should not show up to fight when you have a horrible injury. So people are going to clown him. That's because he's been pulling out. He shouldn't have missed weight again in his last fight against Nicolau. So there's definitely an issue with him missing weight. Um, but this one was a good idea for him to pull out. A little bit annoying, though. A little bit annoying. Kai Kara France is somewhere smiling right now. He is. I saw him comment on Manel Cap's page. He just said, LOL. I did see him say that. So, yeah, he's taken notice of it as well. The elf himself, the elf on the shelf. So, yeah. You think Hill is going to rush for round K a round one KO since he's really confident? Uh, the kicks won't matter that much. Ooh, he's confident that the kicks won't matter? Yeah, I mean, this idea that Alex Pereira can't kick southpaws or you can't kick a southpaw is just total bullshit. I, I don't know where that comes from. Like, yes, I understand that it is a little bit more likely for you to get caught with a straight left when you're kicking a southpaw. But, I mean, look at Justin Gagey versus Dustin Poirier 1. Look at how many kicks Justin Gagey masked Dustin Poirier with. Look at the rematch with Alex Pereira and Adesanya, right? I've literally seen people saying in comment sections, Pereira will never kick uh, Jamal Hill. He doesn't kick southpaws. He never kicked Izzy when Izzy was in southpaw. I rewatched the fight yesterday. Dude, he probably kicked Izzy 10 times from the southpaw stance. Now, it definitely seemed to be less effective. Like, the kicks didn't have as much power on them, of course. But at the same time, like, Alex Pereira, we know his kicks don't have to look like he's putting everything into them in order for them to be damaging. And he was damaging Izzy's legs from both stances. Which is why Izzy almost, you know, was, was stumbling around in the second round because his, both of his legs were turning into toast. So... I think the leg kicks are going to be an issue for Hill. And Hill is a little bit plotty. I'm not going to lie. Like, listen, Jamal Hill waddles around like a duck. I said it in my video. He's a waddler. He's a waddler. He's not a plotter. He's a waddler. He kind of waddles forward with a big gut. And um, I think that as Pereira chips away at his legs, Hill is going to get frustrated. And I think that he's going to overextend on his hook. If you guys haven't watched my video that I put out yesterday, make sure to check it out. But I didn't mention this. I'll just mention it now. So let me just read this. Thank you for the two months membership. How do you think Gordon Ryan would be if he fully transitioned to MMA? I think he would not do a great job. I think that the UFC would probably give him some really easy matchups just because he's a big star. So they would give him the guy with no takedown defense and then they would give him like an old head or something like that that's got a well-rounded game like a Gerald Mearshart, and he would probably submit a Gerald Mearshart. But I just don't think Gordon Ryan's athletic. I think that he's stiff. I think that he's slow. I don't think that he's got any explosive muscle in his body. So I don't think he would do that well in MMA. Also, he would have to get off the sauce. Even though you can take sauce in the UFC, you can't just take as much as you want like you would be able to in professional jiu-jitsu. So I think he'd have to get off of sauce. He'd be less dangerous that way. So I don't think he'd do that well. I think he'd be a sitting duck on the feet. Is he getting a title shot over Strickland when Strickland schooled him and arguably beat DDP is just madness? Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a, in a second. It is madness. I agree. Even though, to be fair, I'm, I'm not going to pretend like I wasn't interested in the Adesanya and DDP fight happening directly after the Strickland fight. We will talk about it. We will talk about it. But what was I talking about? I was talking about Jamal Hill and Alex Pereira. So I was 
planning on making a video, a prediction video, because I usually like to get my prediction videos out two weeks before the big pay-per-view for the main event, just so that way the content can kind of sit in the algorithm for a longer period of time and it really starts heating up the week of the fight. Usually there's like a, a for predictions, if again, if you post them the week of the fight, then no one's watching that video the next week. Whereas if you post it two weeks before the fight, especially for a big card, because there's no point in doing a fight night prediction video for an Apex card two weeks out, it's not relevant yet, but a big matchup is relevant months before it happens. So I really recommend that for any channel out there. Get your predictions out two weeks prior to the event itself. Um, but yeah, never giving bro another idea. What are you talking about? Hey, Lucas, who do you think Jan fights next? Thank you for the three Australian dollars. I think he's going to fight maybe Umar if Corey Sandhagen doesn't take that matchup. Um, I, I think that Jan is willing to fight Umar. And Umar has talked about fighting Jan as well. That definitely could happen. Although that would, to me, that would make me throw up. Just because I, I don't want to see Jan have such a tough matchup against a guy that doesn't even deserve to be ranking anyone and doesn't deserve to be fighting anyone in the top five. That's an abomination. That's a disgrace. The only reason why I'm more okay with it being Corey, who's in an even closer position to the title shot, is just because the UFC made that fight in the past and Corey Sanhagen is not Piotr Jan in the sense where Piotr Jan losing a fight kills my soul. <laughs> Whereas Sanhagen losing a fight, you know, it's rough. I like Sanhagen, but I'm not as big of a fan of him. And Jan has a, a losing skid that he's still not put that far behind him, even though he won his last fight. I want to see him get two in a row. I think Jan would beat Umar Nurmagomedov. I just don't want to see him take that. Someone in the top five, maybe the winner of Davidson Figueredo versus Cody Garbrandt. I think that's a good matchup to make because if Figueredo wins, then that is definitely a fight. The former champion Figueredo, two fight win streak in a new division. He should get something close to a number one contenders fight. What do you think of the St. Louis card? The St. Louis card. Let me look that up. UFC St. Louis. Oh, Lewis versus Nascimento. Is that for St. Louis? Um, let me look up UFC 300 just to kind of look at the card. Is that on May? That's May. I don't, I don't really know what fights are on there, so I couldn't really give you a good breakdown of it. The main event is trash. No one wants to see Derek Lewis fight a nobody that he's most definitely going to knock out in the first round. Who the fuck cares about that? It's a shit fight. I hope that they have a better card than what it looks like right now. But yeah, I'm not hyped about it. I would never get hyped for Derek Lewis versus Nascimento. Thoughts on Shavkat? I mean, Shavkat's a pretty decent fighter. I think he has a good chance to be a champion, but I still think he's got something to prove against people with good takedown defense and good striking. So let's see how he does against JDM. I think JDM might be able to beat him. 100% see Hill coming into this with minimal training due to his injury. Tim Welch said he won't be able to train at all for 12 months. Hill's at nine. Yeah, and they had a very similar injury, huh? It is worrisome. And when they announced the fight, remember, they were scrambling to put together a main event because they couldn't get Conor McGregor. They couldn't get any of these other guys. They couldn't get Adesanya and Drickus Duplessis to make that quick turnaround. So they kind of put it together at the last second. And you could see Hill's reaction to being booked for the main event. It was almost as if he had just said yes just because they offered him the big bag. And he was like, ah, fuck it, dude. This is a shitload of money. Once in a lifetime. But he was not planning on fighting that early. That is not the reason why I'm picking against him. But it definitely is uh, an issue and something to bring up 100%. I saw that you versus bedtime is in the works. It is in the works right now. We're just trying to figure out the location, Australia, the US. We're, we're trying to think of that. So yeah. But let's get back to, again, the reason why I ended up changing my prediction for Jamal Hill and Alex Pereira. So I was planning on doing a video on that anyway yesterday. Because again, I want to get these big fight predictions out a week and a half at the very least before. 
Um, and I was going into my tape study, watching the fights back for confirmation bias. That's usually what it is. I already have a pick in my head. I was just going to make the Alex Pereira getting caught by one twos video. That's what I was going to do. I was going to do the same style of video, but here's Alex Pereira getting caught with one twos. <laughs> and while watching Jamal Hill fight, I could not like stop seeing him leave himself so open. And he looks so much sloppier than what I had imagined. Like when you think of Jamal Hill, you think of this really slick boxer. People have said things like he's got good defense. Remember when there was talks of Jamal Hill fighting Yuri Prohaska? And people were saying things like Hill's defense is pretty good though. He's got great defense. Yuri leaves himself open. Dude, Jamal Hill is sloppy as fuck. Jamal Hill is really sloppy and overextends. And it's not this like slick, super technical guy like everyone thinks he is. Now, don't get me wrong. There are glimpses of really masterful striking. And I think he's a great striker. I think if Alex Pereira doesn't exist, then Jamal Hill, I'm not looking at him in the same light. But it's just when I compared him to Alex, who, yeah, does look a little bit sloppy when he's on the back foot closing his eyes. Alex is just so much cleaner than him. And... um I ended up switching my pick. I was like, fuck, dude, there's so many moments where I have to call Hill's lack of defense out instead of J Alex Perra getting hit with one twos. So if you haven't watched my video, make sure to check it out. I broke down 10 minutes of footage of Jamal Hill and his striking weaknesses. And then I did a 10 minute breakdown of my, you know, my general prediction for the fight. Lucas, JDM beats everyone. Yeah, I, I actually heard that he had staff. Yeah. Now it wasn't just, it wasn't Benoit Saint Denis staff. He had he had minor staff. Benoit had major staff. Very different. We're not gonna treat it the same. Uh, and also JDM was fighting Gilbert Burns, who is not the most dangerous man. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, you know. Uh, yeah, dude. JDM is a tough cookie, man. There's a reason why he didn't look so good. But hey. Staff affects everyone differently, and that's how it is, okay? Let's not compare uh, JDM to Benoit Saint-Denis, even though we kind of have to, but still. Crazy. Crazy, man. Yeah, I saw it. I saw him talk about how he had staff, and he was limping onto the, this is the plane. But my inside sources told me something pretty interesting as well. Apparently, Gilbert Burns had staph. And he was dealing with bad staph infection. Gilbert Burns had it as well. So both guys had staph. It cancels out. It cancels out! All right? No more talk of this bullshit. Uh, LMAO Jamal Hill is a slightly better Kevin Holland. His power and athleticism carries him. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's, for his own weight class, better than Kevin Holland. I think that Jamal Hill has much better kicks. Kevin Holland has like these wiry kicks, but they're not super dynamic. Jamal Hill's kicks are the most underrated part of his game, in my opinion. His head kicks, they're so fast, whippy, they're strong. His kicks in general are amazing. I don't think people give him enough credit for how solid his roundhouse kicks are. Um, and Holland just doesn't have anything like that. So I think he's a little bit better, but either way, yeah, I, I think that he's definitely a little overrated. When you watch him fight, you realize, wait a second, uh, he's actually really open to getting caught with left hooks. But he's still good. I mean, I was picking him. I, I could see him knocking out Pereira. When I say things like I think his power is overrated, I just mean slightly. I just mean it's not what people painted out to be. I hear people talking about this matchup as Jamal Heavy Hands Hill. You know, he's, you don't want to get hit by this guy. Jamal has that sleeper power. Does he? Not really. I mean, I'm not even counting Johnny Walker. Everyone knocks out Johnny Walker. Who has he put away? Uh, Tiago Santos in a war where Tiago had shot 20 takedowns in the fourth round. Tiago kind of dropped due to exhaustion. It wasn't just a boom, big knockdown. And he was out. And then Jimmy Crute. Jimmy Crute and Johnny Walker. Jamal Hill has light heavyweight power. He does have power. I'm not saying he's pillow handed, but he's not the same powerful guy that people paint him out to be. People talk about Jamal Hill like he's a, the heaviest fucking hitter in his division. Like not even close. Okay, not even close. 
JDM also had a broken arm. Crazy. It is pretty crazy. It is pretty crazy. Gilbert Burns had a broken face and a broken back. Which is pretty nutty too, man. Gilbert Burns was a tough out. Gilbert Burns was a tough out in that one. Jamal Pillow Hands Hill. I don't... Uh, he doesn't have pillow hands. He's a light heavyweight. I think he could still KO Pereira. Um, but I have to change my pick. Yeah. Did you see the poll that Dana put on his story? It allows you to rank each fight on UFC 300 from most to least excited. I did see that. Based on the point system, Nickel versus Brundage is third to last. Yep, I saw. I did see that. Yeah, it's a disgrace. And they're only above the two WMMA fights, which is pretty bad as well. Listen, again, the card is amazing. I don't have that much of an issue with Bo versus Brundage, but the fact that it's on UFC 300 in general is a disgrace, okay? And the fact that it's on the main card is 10 times worse than just a disgrace. It's the worst thing to ever happen, okay? <laughs> in UFC history. No, not really, but still, they should have done Albert Duraev. They should have done... Jung Young Park. They should have done someone with some kind of hype. Maybe Andre Muniz. What, what are people going to say? Oh, too much, too much. Okay, so what if he fucking loses? Then guess what? We know that Bo is not going to be a 10-time champion. You know, can you imagine John Jones losing to an Andre Muniz? To an Andre Muniz style of guy ranked where Muniz is? Fuck no, not that early in his career. Put him against someone good. Put him against someone that's actually decent. Like Andre Petrosky. Petrosky sucks. Petrosky sucks. Dude, Bo Nickel would knock his ass out. One round KO. Bo Nickel puts his, out, his lights out. And then what? Petrosky's going to wrestle against him? Good luck. Malkoon would be a good fight, but I think Petrosky would be better um, just because, again, he's looking like a powerful wrestler. He just has like the powerful wrestler build, whereas Malkoon is, he's got the sleeper build. He's got the sleeper physique. Thoughts on Amir Albazi and his future? Listen, I, I, I love Amir Albazi, and um, he's a good friend of mine, but he's not that exciting, I got to be honest. Now, again, I'm a, I'm a friend of Albazi. I, I like him. He's my boy, but um, he's a little bit boring, okay? I got to be honest. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of watching him fight. Let me actually, let me actually be real. I don't have any thoughts about Albazi and his future. If Albazi were to leave the UFC right now, I, I honestly don't think anyone bats an eye, okay? I like the guy. He's, he's my favorite fighter, but I don't think anyone bats an eye. I'm going to just keep it real with you. I hope he fights soon, but to be honest, the only image I have in my head of Amir Albazi is a boring-ass fight with Kai Kara France because every other fight he has is totally forgettable. So, yeah. Petrosky low-key has a crazy physique. He does have a pretty crazy physique. John is a harder test than Hill and would beat Hill. Oh, Jan. Jan is a harder test than Hill and would beat Hill. I agree. I agree with that. Jan actually will mix in the grappling like he did. And Jan's defense is really solid. And I thought Jan was looking old and slow. Remember, I was saying, dude, I just can't see Jan standing with Pereira on the feet. Of course, they were at altitude. They were a little bit slow. I hate when the UFC goes to altitude. Everyone looks like shit. Uh, they look so slow and lethargic. But Jan still has really good defense, and he's technical, and he's not sloppy, and he doesn't leave a lot of openings. He's just a little bit slow. But Pereira at 205 is not as fast as he was at 185. So that's kind of why I was thinking Pereira is going to smoke Jan on the feet. But I also picked Jan to win because I thought he would TKO or submit Pereira on the ground. Pereira improved. I agree, though. I think that Jan is a harder test than Hill. I think he's a craftier fighter. And that's when Pereira was even less experienced. And look at him now. Look at him now. He stood up and look at him now. The way Hill is talking reminds me of what Sean Strickland was saying before fighting Pereira. We saw how that went. True. It does actually give me a similar feel now that you mention it. Yeah, very true. Very true. Um... Again, there's a little... Strickland doesn't have the same salt, so you have to keep that in mind. Jamal Hill is, is going in there with enough salt to fill a salt mine, and sometimes that salt gives you a harder chin, a, a harder noggin, and I could see Jamal Hill just gritting it out, biting down on that mouthpiece, and, and just freaking smoking through the middle with a nice right hand, pure anger and rage. But yes, I see what you're saying. I, I see what you're saying. Uh, do y'all watch fights? Jan got worked by Glover. 
Oh my goodness, this guy. This guy, brother, this guy, this guy, crazy, brother. We all have it. We're all having a good talk about Jan Blahovich and his crafty, big, ugly skills. And this guy has to ruin it with the Jan disrespect, dude. Get out of here, son. You can't, no disrespecting Jan in the chat. Everyone knows that was a one off moment. And everyone knows that, let, let me just say this, all jokes aside, because it, yes, he did get smoked by Glover. Glover Teixeira was a world champion. Like, Glover Teixeira gave Yuri Prohaska the toughest fight of his life. Glover Teixeira smoked Tiago Santos and Anthony Prime Smith. Literally, the Anthony Smith that fought Glover Teixeira whooped his fucking ass, okay? Anthony Smith was whooping his ass. It was a five-rounder and he emptied the gas tank and his coaches were, were, were yapping too much. But Glover, let's not act like, oh, you, you lost to some old bum. Glover, the best he ever was? The most durable Glover ever? I don't even know how Glover got more durable after the KOs, but he did. So, I mean, it's not the worst look. And let's be honest, it was an off night for Jan too. It, although it was a good night for Glover, it was definitely an off night for Jan. All right? So it's not... Okay, fair enough. What about the Luke Rockhold fight? What about the Corey Anderson fight? What about the Adesanya fight? What about the Alexander Rakic fight? You're going to act like Jan is not that good? I mean, Jan is more proven than Jamal Hill. Just because he lost to Glover. I mean, Jan ain't losing to, you know, crafty old, shitty old Paul Craig. I'm just joking. I mean, it's not a bad look to lose to Paul Craig. Everyone loses to him every once in a while. Yeah. Thank you for the $2. Big Shafkot starches JDM. Um... No, I don't think he starts as JDM. You know what? I could see one of those guys putting like a life-changing amount of damage on the other. Like, I think they're going to go to war, but I think it might just be one of those fights. Unless the grappling comes into the equation and Shavkat takes JDM down and subs him, which could happen. Which is probably why I would pick Shavkat. They're so durable and they're so good in close range that I think if the grappling doesn't really come into the equation, it's going to be a, a, a nasty war. And I could see like a fourth or fifth round finish where whoever gets finished is just never going to be the same again, right? It's going to be like Dan Hooker after the Poirier war. Both guys took a ton of damage, but for whatever, again, they're too tough for their own good. I could see something like that. But it's a good thing that they're both young and maybe that won't be the case. But uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a war. I don't think Shavkat starches him. I don't... Listen, that fight's not ending via starching, okay? It's ending because one of them is just going to collapse due to exhaustion or something like that, or maybe a submission, but they're too tough to just get slumped like that. Two of the best chins in the UFC. Uh, thank you for the $2. Don't disrespect the white man in front of the LT clan. Okay, thank you for the two bucks, uh, Big Donut. Don't disrespect Jan, bro. When are your full card picks dropping? The full card picks dropping this week. They are dropping this week. Um, I still haven't figured out what video I'm going to make today, but I'm liking UFC 300 content. I'm really interested in doing more UFC 300 videos this week because, of course, my predictions are going to come out on Sunday. It's going to be an hour-long video. So that's going to be fun. But I also want to get my main predictions out sooner rather than later. So I may as well just ask you guys right now, what prediction would you want to see? What, what individual prediction would you want to see for UFC 300? Do you want to see Charles and Armand? I'm definitely going to do that. Or Gagey and Holloway next. Because I'm going to do those two, 100%. But I just want to know what you guys would rather see next. Max, Justin, or Charles and Armand? Zhang Yan. I could do Zhang Yan instead. Maybe I could just hold off Max and Justin and Charles and Armand to the full card predictions. Because to be honest, I, I, I've been thinking about Yan Zhao Nan and Zhang Wei Li quite a, bo quite a bit. And um, the Holly Holm fight. Maybe I could do the Holly Holm fight. Because the thing is, no one's going to really watch those clips from my full card prediction. So maybe I should just do two individual videos on those and leave the Holloway BMF fight and the Charles fight to the full card predicts and not do a whole video on that. So I think that's probably a good idea. Maybe a Holly Holm and Kayla Harrison 20-minute deep dive, War Room, something like that. Charles is a more interesting fight, true. 
Charles and Armand is, in my opinion, a little bit more interesting than the Holly Holm fight. Just a little bit. Okay? Nah, nah, nah. I'm going to do both. If Max wins, I don't care about any of the results. You know what's funny? Because, I, I, okay, I guess that... What were people saying? I'm not going to do an individual video for Figgy and Garbrandt. <laughs> like, I, I would want to do too many before I get to that one. I'll definitely break that down for like eight minutes. Like, all my breakdowns of my full card predictions are going to be pretty long. I'm looking forward to that one. Yuri Rakic, Charles Armand, Max and Justin, Charles Armand. Listen, I mean, I'm going to do both. I, I, I don't even need to ask. I'm going to do both. I'm just figuring out which one I'm more excited about today. I think I'm going to do Charles and Armand. I think that's what I'm going to do next. And then I'll do Max, Justin. So to answer your question, the full card picks, we may not be dropping them till next week for uh, the Brendan Allen and Curtis Curtis fight. I might have to wait till maybe a, a members video in a, in a couple of months. We'll, we'll make sure we get the results and I'll put my predictions in so we can tally them off for the rest of the year. But yeah, no, nah, I'm joking. <laughs> Speaking of members, I apologize for not posting my last meal yesterday. I tried to post it three times and it wouldn't post. It was a nasty meal. It was not a good looking meal, but I tried to post it like multiple times. So I don't know what the fuck was happening with that. But what I am going to do for the members, uh, I am going to do a, a member stream right after this, but I'm going to do a, a cookbook recipe. So I'm going to do a cooking video today. Okay. I'll do a cooking video today. That's uh, We're going to do a cookbook. But yeah. What are your predictions for this week? I'm going to gatekeep until my video comes out, honestly. Because now people are asking about it. I'm happy you guys want to see the prediction video. I'll, I'll tell you this. I'm going to do my Armand and Charles video first. And then I'm going to do my full card picks for this upcoming week. Yeah. How are your beef eggs? My beef eggs? What does that even mean? I did, beef eggs? I'm drinking bone broth right now. But I mean, yeah, what I had last night, I had some liver. I've been eating more liver recently. A lot more liver. Um, but I had this really thick piece of liver. I didn't really cook it very well. It's kind of hard to cook like a thick piece of liver. Um, so yeah, it does. It's not. It wasn't really tasty. I really recommend if you guys want to eat liver, but they taste kind of bad or it tastes kind of shitty. Don't overcook it because I mean you're just kind of going to destroy the nutrition in it. And eat it with some butter. Put some butter on it. Eat it with a, a slice of sourdough. It'll taste a lot better. And don't eat a lot of it. You don't want to eat like a, a shitload of liver. It's got way too much vitamin A. Do you season liver? I just put salt on it. Bro can't cook? I can cook. I have an actual cookbook. I'm actually probably the best cook out of the 783 people that are watching this, unless there are any professional chefs. But I obviously, you can't, dude, it's funny because you can't become a cookbook writer without having a culinary background. I don't think, you think that I just wrote a cookbook without a culinary background? Like I studied chefery. For at least 10 years, I, I was in Copenhagen. I was uh, studying in uh, Copenhagen at the, the finest culinary school. And of course, I, I, I spent a lot of time. I took a whole year out from the fitness game to just kind of sit and, and think and, and brainstorm different ideas on what recipes would work. And we tried them out. Some of them worked. Some of them didn't work. There were a couple that didn't work. <laughs> that may have got into the cookbook that may taste kind of nasty. There's a couple that worked that got in. All right. If you've had the cookbook and you've tried those brownies, you'll see what I'm talking about. Those brownies are gross. You know, those brownies are pretty nasty. I'm not going to lie. They're tasty, but they're nasty. Make sure to try those banana brownies real easy. They take 10 minutes to make. I'm joking. They're not nasty. They're, they're, they're a acquired. Let's say it's, let's say it's an acquired taste. Anything that's an acquired taste, that just means it's not that good. Uh, but that's the only thing. Just checking if my PayPal works. Enjoy if it works. It worked. Thank you for the five pounds. I appreciate that. Drop a big meaty heart. Oh, I thought you were going to say drop a big meaty hooks something. Drop a big hearty Ollie home. Ollie home for me. I, I got you. 
how on earth will Kayla make weight? She'll die. She has to hop off the sauce if she hops off the steroids and loses a little bit of weight just based on lifting less. She could do it. It's not that hard to lose that muscle. I mean, just hop off the sauce and train hard. Diet. Can you ban Andro? He is annoying uh, and a homosexual. Thank you for the five bucks. I don't even know who you're talking about, but thank you for the five pounds. I appreciate that. I meant for the card this Saturday. Okay, thank you for the 279 Canadian dollars. Yes, I, I got you. Full card picks are going to be dropping. Let's say tomorrow. We'll be putting them out tomorrow. We need a Khalil versus Jan. Or you know what? <sighs> Maybe I'll do today. Maybe I'll do two videos today, but it's going to be hard. We need a Khalil versus Jan. It would be fun. Khalil versus Jan would be a dream fight. I've been talking about that for a while as well. Uh, Drika Saradasanya, thank you for the 36 AED Mercedes. Thank you so much. Drikas or Adesanya? Um, I got to go with Drikas. I can't pick Adesanya. In that fight, I have to go with Drikas Duplessis. All right, one guy is active and hungry and hasn't made it. The other guy is a multi-millionaire, made it. He's been on top for forever. He's been on vacation. Sure, he might be gearing up, literally gearing up for Drikas Duplessis, and they got him in his backyard. And right, they're not going to Drikas's home turf. Uh, I mean, I just think it's clear UFC Africa is never going to happen. Whatever, if. Maybe they don't have, um, but they do have the infrastructure in South Africa. But I guess the UFC just doesn't want to go there. I understand it. Um, but I go with Drickus just because his grappling is going to be an issue. That The gritty wrestling hard rounds are going to be an issue. I don't think he's going to destroy Izzy on the ground, though. We did see Drickus beat up Whitaker a little bit, but I don't know, man. I... I, I that's not enough for me to say Drickus Duplessis is the nasty grappler that people say he is. Like, yeah, he submitted Darren Till, but who didn't submit Darren Till as soon as they had his back and on the ground? Darren Till was tapping before Drickus even got his hand around his, his neck, right? I mean, he was literally tapping as soon as he was put there. I think Izzy's going to be able to get up to his feet. I just think that he's going to get gassed out. I think he's going to get tired, and I think that he's not going to finish Drickus in the first two rounds. But you never know. Izzy could ruin the night. He could start Drickus Duplessis and do a TikTok dance and uh, flop in front of Drickus's family and kids or something like that. I could see him doing that, showing no class <laughs> uh, and pissing me off and ruining my night. But he could definitely get the finish. I I'm going to pick Drickus though. So Izzy wins. Izzy could win, but I'm picking Drickus. I think that, but this idea that, that Drickus Duplessis is just going to manhandle everyone and blast through everyone with his grappling. I don't buy it, okay? But I'll have to look at more Izzy tape when he gets taken down because Izzy does get taken down whenever people want him to take him down. It's just the guys that have taken him down don't have great submissions or ground and pound. So I'll have to compare them to Drickus. Uh, LMAO, oh, wait, wait. Thank you for the $5. I mean, the way they punch. Hill and Holland overextend horribly and are kind of sloppy when you really watch them punch. True. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah, the way that they punch is a little bit similar. Uh, yeah, the athleticism kind of carries them. I, I do now see what you're saying. Thank you for the five bucks crazy HD videos. Thank you for the $5. Ours, I appreciate that. Alex versus Salty Hill. Is it a back and forth or a quick KO? I think Pereira can KO him in three. I think it'll be a good back and forth. But I think that uh, Pereira is going to be a little bit slicker, a little bit tidier. And Jamal Hill is, I think he's going to overextend. I'm going to pick a second round KO for Alex. I think it's going to be somewhat quick. A little bit of back and forth stuff. But in the second round, I think Hill's movement is going to deteriorate. And I think that Alex is going to make a good read on him leaving himself open. Because Alex will stay patient early on. I think that he's learned a great lesson from the Adesanya fights. Is He can get caught early on in fights. And he, he needs to have a really defensive approach. Just the same thing against Yuri. He wasn't letting his hands go a lot. He was not letting his hands go that much against Yuri. He stayed very patient and eventually worked out. So I think if he stays patient, he finishes Hill. Hill's going to have to go for it. And... 
it's going to be a live by the sword or, or die by the sword moment for him, you know? I don't even, I, I, I fucking butcher that. Not a live by the sword, die by the sword, but he's going to have to go out on his shield is what I'm saying. All right? It's, it's, it's sink or swim. Hill can't go pitter-pat mode with Alex Pereira. You can't win in a pitter-pat fight with him. He's too technical. He's too good on the feet. Is eating liver still worth it if you eat it once a week? Yes, it is worth it if you eat it once a week, 100%. But my recommendation is to sparse it out. Eat it a, a few times a week, small amounts. That's the best thing that you can do. Like an ounce or two ounces a few times a week. Do you think Drew, the Grand Wizard Dober, will win? Drew Dober, has he been booked to fight? I don't see any Drew Dober news. Did he just get booked? Um, well, I haven't seen anything recently. So, I don't know. It depends on who his opponent is. It depends on if he's motivated or not. Thank you for the two, CHF. Hey, thank you for the two pounds. Harry Oatley, did Pfeiffer move out of your basement? Did Pfeiffer move you out of the basement? <laughs> uh, no, Pfeiffer did not move me out of the basement. Alex, yeah. What makes you think Hamzat is going to lose to Robert Whitaker? It's a five-rounder. Hamzat's gas tank is very questionable. And if he goes out the gates fast like he normally does and he doesn't finish Whitaker, I think he's going to lose. He'll gas out. He'll be a completely different guy. Maybe Whitaker's going to tire out after the first round. You never know. That could also be the case, but Whitaker hasn't shown to be able to, hasn't shown to gas out as easily. And if Hamzat shows a more patient approach, I think it's going to be easier for Whitaker to stuff the takedowns if Hamzat gives him more space early on rather than just bulldozing him. And I think that if Hamzat gives him more space, Whitaker's just going to make his reads early. And uh, once Whitaker makes his reads, he warms up into a fight better than anyone else in that division. So I got to go with Whitaker. Great takedown defense. He's going to be a strong dude. He's got a very strong base, great hips for stuffing takedowns. And he's just a much slicker striker. So, yeah. Five-rounder. That's a big issue for Hamzat if he doesn't finish Whitaker. Not that Whitaker's going to put him out, but Whitaker will be able to beat him and outstrike him. I think it's a similar matchup to the Yoel 1 fight, to be honest. It's just that uh, this time Hamzad is better at controlling you, but doesn't have the same dangerous aspect on the feet. Pereira doesn't move his big-ass head and gets tagged constantly by people who understand range. He'll be doing the chicken dance next Saturday. <laughs> people who understand range, okay? I mean, like... I'm sure Yuri Prohaska at this point understands range. I'm sure Jan Blahovich understands range. What happened in those fights where those guys are far less sloppy, right? And they don't overextend that much. And they were able to find the mark multiple times. What happened to all those clean shots that were connected on his chin in his last two fights? Nothing. That's the answer. Nothing happened. Yes, Pereira could get KO'd. Yes, he could. But it's not like, oh, once you understand range, he's done. Jan doesn't understand range. What, what, Jamal Hill is the first guy since Izzy to understand range? That doesn't make sense. Hey, he's acting like Hill is Floyd Mayweather or some shit. Hamzat will break brittle, <laughs> brittle, brittleker, too much strength. Whitaker, yeah, I can see it. he does look a little bit brittle. Dude, someone was mad when I said this, but it is kind of true. Whitaker has like a tubby upper body physique. Whitaker's the only guy that can be shredded and tubby at the same time. He's got like this barrel midsection, like a muffin top coming over his freaking shorts, barrel midsection, tubby as heck. Yet he's shredded and he has super lean abs. He has a very weird build. He does look a little bit strange. And whenever someone has a weird build, they do look a little bit uh, less sturdy. But Whitaker has got a strong base. He's got big quads. So I think he'll be fine. I mean, I don't think he's that brittle. And it's not like Hamzat Chemaev is just wailing in the biggest roundhouse kicks like Drikas Duplessis and just swinging his whole body into every shot. Drikas Duplessis is like a wrecking ball. Just constantly bulldozing forward at his opponents. Hamzat Chemaev, he's going to find you. He's going to get his hands on you. He's going to take you down. He's going to try to gas you out and submit you. He's a grappling monster early on, but... He's not the same physical force on the feet, I don't think. Now, he could knock Whitaker out. I think there's a good chance that Hamzat could KO Whitaker early with a nice right hand. 
I think that maybe he's not going to go out the gates as quickly because like the last fight, maybe he'll learn another lesson Listen against these high-level guys. I don't want to gas out. And maybe he'll like strike a little bit. And if that's the case, I could see him smoking Whitaker with a nice right hand. Because we know Hamzat does have power early. But I think it's most likely he's going to grapple like he normally does. We'll see, though. We'll definitely see. Um, who wins, Romero or Hamzat? I love your content, by the way. But then again, you know, Hamzat was slugging with Kamaru Usman in the third and second. Not, not the second, but in the third round. And that power wasn't really there. Of course, he was tired, but still. I expected Hamzat at this point in his career to be like a really clean surgical striker after seeing that Gerald Mearshart finish and that finish against Aliskadov back in the day. I expected him to be better than he is right now. But I don't think he's improving as much as I thought. Who wins Romero or Hamzat? I love your content, by the way. Hey, thank you for the 20 SEK, Yoel Romero lover. I appreciate that. Romero or Hamzat? I think Romero. I don't think Hamzat submits Romero. I don't think he takes him down. I think that Romero can maybe stuff the takedowns. Um, I think Romero maybe beats him by decision. I could see Hamzat emptying the gas tank, Romero being tired after the early going, expending a lot of energy, stuffing the takedowns, and then not being as explosive. And then it, it being like a sloppy Romero Costa round three style of fight where Romero is just kind of out voluming Hamzat and Hamzat's just breaking and gassing. So I think it'd be maybe a Romero decision. Maybe that's the case. Break the curse. We are, oh, dude, I don't think this is going to break the curse. I've gotten every single main event right this year for pay-per-views. Who do you think Costa's fighting? I don't know. Hopefully, I don't even know, dude. It's not really fair to give him a Jared Kennanier matchup just because they were booked to fight a while back and he pulled out and Jared Kennanier's on a win streak. I don't know who you put him up against. Maybe... <sighs> Anthony Hernandez, but they gave Hernandez Roman Delizzi. Like, who gives a fuck about that? So, yeah. Check news. Uriah Faber versus Cruz book for 300. I don't believe that. I don't buy it at all. I don't buy it, dude. I don't buy it at all, brother. Nope, it wasn't booked. BS. It's not booked. Not booked. I don't buy it. We'll check, though. Nope. Also, why would that be booked? This, like, you really think the UFC is going to leap on the opportunity to make Cruz in favor? I don't think so. Thank you for the five... Dollars. I appreciate that. Jao Lucas, thank you so much. If Alex loses to Hill, um, how does not having any title defenses affect his legacy? Plus that questionable Yuri stoppage. I mean, listen, I don't think that the Yuri stoppage is going to really ruin his legacy at all. I mean, it is what it is. It was early, but he was winning the fight. Again, he was starting to lose the round on the feet, but he was staying technical and he was just picking his shots. Let's not look too deeply into it. But yeah, I mean, Hill, if he beats Pereira, the fact that Pereira wouldn't have any title defenses, I guess it makes him similar to Conor McGregor. It gives him a very Conor McGregor-esque legacy, right? It's just that uh, Jamal Hill, I'm sorry, Alex Pereira never beat Jose Aldo. That's the difference. Who would be the Aldo of the light heavyweight or middleweight division? That'd be like beating Anderson Silva in his prime, right? That would be like beating John Jones or DC in their prime. He didn't have the opportunity to beat guys like that, so he wouldn't even have the same impressive wins. But either way, yeah, it wouldn't be great for his legacy. It would not be great for his legacy. Not at all. But yeah, I mean, Alex Pereira and Mark Goddard, that is one heck of a duo, that is one heck of a duo right there. Those guys are unstoppable together. Everyone's getting stopped prematurely. Everyone's getting stopped prematurely. Yeah. Thanksgiving at the Tracy residence has to be hell. 
why would it be hell? Uh, thank you for the $2. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. But guys, let's actually get into some of these fights that have been booked. Because I wanted to do, you know, at least a little bit of a, a look at the recent matchups. So the first one that we're going to look at is Mateus Nicolau versus Alex Perez. What's next for Magomed? Title against the 300 winner. What's next for Magomed? Yes, the title against the 300 winner. That would be next from probably not going to be at the Brazil card. Uh, Ilya puts people to sleep that there's no worries about early stoppage. True. No worries about early stoppages with Ilya. Um, but guys, let's, let's break this down a little bit before we, we get into the member stream. I really wanted to go over some of these fights that have been booked recently. So the first one that we should look at is Mateus Nicolau versus Alex Perez. Does anyone care about this fight? The answer would be no. And I, I think it's time that we start being honest here. I think that the flyweight division is the only division in the UFC where the top 10 is less interesting than outside the top 10 and, and just, you know, floating out there and the, outside of the rankings. I honestly think it is. I don't give a fuck about Alex Perez fights. I don't care that much about Mateus Nicolau fights. Oh, Mateus Nicolau. Look, look at what he did to Matt Schnell with absolutely no chin. Whoa. Okay. Oh, Mateus Nicolau. Look, he, he had a decision and robbed Manel Cap. Whoa. Oh, Alex Perez, the, the second place king, always losing in big fights, <laughs> getting smudged. Against Mohamed Mikhaev. Wow. Are we going to be a fan of Alex Perez because he landed more punches against Mikhaev now? Uh, listen, I, I like these guys. These are my favorite fighters. Perez is my favorite fighter. But still, I got to be honest. This is a typical flyweight NPC matchup. Look at these UFC 4 generated bots. Okay? This, you're telling me this is not a generated bot? Flyweight, this is literally what a flyweight looks like if you just look up flyweight UFC. A photo of this guy's face comes up, okay? But Perez is my favorite fighter. I got to keep it honest. But still, like, I just got to be honest. The flyweight division is cooked. It's interesting with Manel Cap and Kai Kara France having a beef. Outside of their beef, come on. I care about guys outside of the rankings. I care about... Uh, the guy from Dunder Mifflin getting a title shot. That's more interesting than this. I mean, Steven Urseg is a breath of fresh air compared to these guys. <sighs> Come on, man. I'm fucking sick and tired of the hardcore fans acting like Flyweight's the shit. Flyweight sucks. Yes, they are skilled. But these are bots. Okay? <laughs> Like, how could you care about this, man? How could you care about this, bro? Whatever. I love Cap, but I'm getting sick of this shit. Dude, I am too. Cap is pulling out. He's like the only interesting guy in the top 10. And the only reason why Manel Cap's even fun is because he talks shit. His fights are good, fair enough. But, you know, listen, his fights are good. But he's fought everyone there too. He's had... 50 rematches as well, like everyone else. I want the UFC to just have a flyweight tournament and uh, let's just do flyweight cards. Remember I said that the way to save WMMA is just to put, him on our, put everyone on their own card? WMMA stacked cards at the Apex. Everyone's going to tune in. Do that with flyweight. Do a whole flyweight night. <laughs> Spare me from these though. Main events? Fucking hell. Who cares about that? Yeah, I'm not a fan of it. Which Bash Rap brother gets the belt first? None. Bash Rap bros are not going to win the belt. They're not coming close, dude. One of them was losing to Eamon Zahabi, and he was the better Bash Rat. What's next for Magomed? Title against... Yes, next... Yeah, Magomed would get the title next. Anyway, let's get on to the next fight. Okay, let's get on to the next fight. Um, Chaos Williams versus... Chaos Williams versus Carl. 
I forgot the last name. Casual alert, dude. He's Carl. His name is Carl, goddammit. I don't want to hear anything. His name is Carl. I know it's Carl. Yeah! Yeah, I got that shit right! Yeah! It's Carl, brother. Dude, I was fucking worried for a second. I was like, wait a second. This is Carlston Harris. Carlston. He's a little... He's from, he's from the Caribbean, right? So... It's got that Carlston to it, man. He's not just a Carl, bro, but yeah, I'm not a casual. You can't call me a casual. I knew his name. Get out of there with that. I actually called him by his nickname. That means I'm even more hardcore than a casual. Casual will never call him by his nickname. I, I'm, I'm on a nickname basis with this dude. So yeah. Anyway, Chaos Williams versus Carlston Harris. I, I like this fight. Two sloppy swingers. <laughs> <laughs> Two sloppy swingers. Chaos Williams, probably the sloppiest slinger in the West, dude. Versus Carlston Oldhead Harris. Dude, Carlston Harris is probably like 20 years old, bro. He's always looked like an old head. Carlston Young Gun Harris at 20 years old, looking like he's 50. Um, I'm thinking that Carlston Harris might win this fight, dude, based on being a little bit more of a tough out, dude. A little bit more of a tough out. Aspinall finishes Bones. It won't get made, but still, yes, Aspinall knocks Bones out. Any Bellator champ with a chance against a UFC champ? Maybe I could maybe see Nemkov having the best chance. I think that Nemkov is the best Bellator champion right now. I could see him giving Alex Pereira issues because his wrestling is pretty damn solid, but you never know. You never know. His striking is good, though. His striking is pretty good. People are underrating Hamza. Why wouldn't... He bum rush a short notice Usman. I think he'll control Whitaker and do damage methodically. Rob will gas. People are underrating Hamzat. Why wouldn't he bum rush a short notice Usman? I think he'll control Whitaker and do damage methodically. Rob will gas. Why wouldn't he bum rush a short notice Usman? Fair enough. I understand that. But I mean, he did. I understand the idea of look at his game plan. He did bum rush, but he gassed and he always does that. It's not like, oh, he, he decided to bum rush for the first time ever because Usman was on short notice. No, he always does that. So, yeah, I don't think Whitaker will gas. Like you're saying, Rob's going to gas, man. No one can keep up with the pace. The pace comes crashing down. He has no pace. He can't maintain it. He has a five minute pace. Okay. So I don't think that's the case. Five minute pace, unless it's against Reese Bum McKee. Okay, thank you for the five pounds, but I disagree. But I'm going to go with Carlson Harris. I'm going to go with Carlson Harris just by being a little bit awkward, right? A little bit awkward. Um, Carlson Harris is a good chin, even though he did get kind of flattened by Shavkat Rachmanov. But Chaos Williams' power is not what people make it out to be, and he's just not very good. So I'm probably going to go with Harris. Let's get on to the next one. Phil Rowe, the biggest disappointment Last year at welterweight, had an ability to knock out Neil Magny if he just stuck behind the reach. Not many people have a reach to match Neil Magny. Phil Rowe did, but his game plan was to kind of go into the clinch with Magny and just kind of test the waters in the clinch, and he lost. Embarrassingly lost. And you never know what Phil Rowe's going to do. Just a, a very disappointing performance. I think he has the ability to knock out Jake Matthews, but... You never know what you're going to get. He could go out there just trying to throw a bunch of pitter-pat kicks and teeps to the body. If Phil Rowe sticks behind the 1-2, I think he could put away Jake Matthews, who does have a pretty decent chin, but I could see it happening. Um, but I might have to go with Jake Matthews. It's a little bit more tested and proven at the mid-level in the UFC. Pretty durable. He has grappling. Uh, even though Phil Rowe, I don't know how, but he's like a thing in the jiu-jitsu community. How? Again, I don't understand it. He's competed against Craig Jones. He's competed against Gordon Ryan. I don't know how the hell he's getting all these opportunities. He's not even that good. He's not proven himself as a grappler in MMA. I guess he's like a big... That, that's how lame Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is. He's like a big star in the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu community. He's like the Brock Lesnar of BJJ. This guy crosses over to Jiu-Jitsu and everyone goes bonkers. Phil Rose in the house and he's got the boom box. Like, <laughs> that's... That's whoa, whoa, so crazy, right? Um, yeah, Phil Rowe is like a celebrity out there. But this is a fight. 
This is not a, you know, free paycheck to show up to get submitted in the first minute against Gordon Ryan. This is a fight, and Phil Rose made some serious mistakes. Uh, Whitaker versus Pereira, I wish we could have seen it. Yeah, I wish we could have seen it as well. Piera, exactly. That that would have been a good fight. I, I would have rather have seen Whitaker versus Pereira, but that guy that Chael Sonnen always talks about, Piera, seems like he's a pretty tough cookie as well. Haven't seen him fight, though, but Chael's always ranting and raving about him. How many times have you edged to Benoit St. Denis? I don't edge to Benoit St. Denis. I haven't even thought of Benoit St. Denis. I've not even watched an interview of his. I've not really... Wondered if he has a fight coming up, because as far as I'm concerned, I'm not as big of a fan of Benoit St. Denis as you guys think. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I think he's going to win his next fight. Not worried at all. I think that Dustin Poirier fight was a one-off. Prime Hendo versus Prime Yoel 2. Two powerful wrestlers who never won a UFC belt, who don't really use their wrestling to its full potential. It would definitely be a war. Yeah, I mean, Yoel will use his wrestling more than Hendo, though. But I, I think that Yoel wins. He's bigger. He's just as durable, more durable. What am I saying? He's more durable. And he hits as hard. So I think Yoel wins. Uh, Prime Henderson was, listen, he was not on the same level as Yoel Romero. Henderson was a guy that was losing every now and then. Yoel didn't really lose that often. Yoel would have a draw in a title fight, or he would get robbed in a title fight, but Yoel wasn't losing in non-title fights, unless it was a robbery. I think Yoel's better. And stylistically, it's it's not exactly like a good stylistic matchup for either guy. It's just a mirror matchup, but I just think Yoel was a better version of him. So, yeah. Derek Lewis versus Nascimento. This right here is a disgrace. We all wanted to see Jarzino Rosen strike versus Derek Lewis. We all wanted to see Derek Lewis fight someone that is relevant, where we know that we're going to get a slugfest and the guy on the other side has a highlight reel. But this guy, Rodrigo Nascimento, literally popped out of the apex. I mean, they're choosing an apex NPC for Derek Lewis. It doesn't make sense to me. He has no fans. He is cryogenically frozen at the apex, um, literally has the apex physique. Again, at the apex, they feed you through a feeding tube because, again, they're cryogenically frozen. They can't just take you out of the, the chamber and give you food and feed you with a spoon. So they have to put something in the feeding tube, and the food that they put in is not the best quality. That's why a lot of these apex heavyweights tend to have very soft-looking physiques as well. They don't really exercise a lot in the offseason. They're kind of just... They have a, a good enough build to be able to maintain that shit physique in the offseason. But, uh, yeah, I think Derek Lewis is going to freaking knock this dude out. And I don't—listen, prelims of a pay-per-view, first prelim, fair enough. I don't mind seeing Derek Lewis get a nasty KO. But a main event? We're, we're going to wait— and, and and the last card in front of a sold-out crowd sucked. That last card was whack. This card's probably going to be whack, too. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, because the UFC doesn't really go to a lot of different cities all that often, like these fight nights in front of sold-out arenas are few and far in between. But more often than not these days, when they actually go to a city, the fight nights usually end up sucking. Like... Texas has always been good. The Florida cards have always been decent, but they did a fight night in the UK last year that sucked. The Paris fight night wasn't that great outside of Benoit St. Denis and gone, and I got my main event wrong, so I was a little bit upset about that. Um, but a lot of these cards that they've been doing in, in the US, these fight nights, have been kind of whack. I remember they did that Ohio card with Curtis Plotty Man's Blades, Big Stutter, and they put who did they put against him? Uh... The bantamweight, Chris Dawkins. They they did big stutter versus the bantamweight, and it was horrible. It was terrible. So, I don't know. I'm kind of not looking forward to this. I feel like these weak fight night main events in front of sold out crowds tend to suck. The stacked ones always play out amazing, but these kind of weak ones always suck in front of crowds. But sometimes at the apex, they'll be great. Uh, then you got Cody. Versus, ha, <laughs> ha, 
You got Cody versus ha ha ha. All right. You got Cody versus ha ha ha. Now I call him ha 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 because he's uh you know that's his nickname. I'm on a first I'm on a nickname basis with him. <laughs> he's a great fighter, man. He's a great fighter. Um but we call him ha 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 because he's got the the receding hairline and and he used to say he used to cope with it. He used to say back in the day, I don't have a receding hairline. And we used to laugh at it. So we would always call him ha ha ha. Of course, of course, his name is Taylor Lapulus. Yeah! Taylor Lapulus in the building. I knew this motherfucker was Taylor Lapulus. Because I saw this dude fight in my last prediction video. I saw him fight in my last... He fought... Logren. He fought Kowlin Logren. And Kowlin Logren lost to him. And I was saying, Taylor Lapulus is not a bad guy to lose to. But we call him Ha Ha Ha, where I'm from, dude. So respect to Taylor Lapulus. The guy's a, a UFC legend. I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going with Stamen in that one. <laughs> I'm going with Stamen in that one. Exposed, man. Thank you for the $2. Patchy Mix chokes out Umar Marab and O'Malley. Oh, 100%. Patchy Mix, the Bellator guy. Always got to go with the Bellator guys just because they're a little... The Bellator is a really tough cookie stable. They've got a great stable of guys over there. I think that uh, these Bellator guys are actually... They're better. They're better than UFC fighters. Usman versus Pereira at 185. Imagine Prime Stipe at 205. Oh, Prime Stipe at 205 would be a slug. Prime Stipe at 205 is a, is a freaking slug plodding around. I don't think he's the, the monster you think. Because you said it as, imagine Stipe 205, that power. Yeah, imagine that speed. Imagine that plottiness. I don't think Stipe at 205 is the monster you think he is. I think Stipe is right where he needed to be. <laughs> okay? Stipe's good, though. Stipe's the goat at heavyweight. Um, but still. No, no. Stipe would be all right. It's just, who, who, who would he fight? He'd fight uh, DC. And he'd, he'd be small. Small Stipe didn't have the power. Stipe was the kind of guy that didn't have like that extra power the lighter he was. Sometimes he moved down a weight class, he got more pop, pound for pound. Stipe was always the most powerful when he was at his biggest, which was at the start of his title reign. Right, 2017, around there, that was when Stipe was laying dudes out. And he was big then. He started to lean out for the Cormier fights. Yeah. Have you seen how Bedtime looks? I bet he's a sub five. I've never seen Bedtime. No, I've not seen him. I've not seen bedtime. Um, yeah. But he should do the face reveal. Flukas Glazy, hey, thank you for the 24 RON. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Bro, you and Chill would be unstoppable together. I would love to do something with Chill in the future. But let's look at this one. Brad Katona. Versus Mr. Mustache. <laughs> Yeah, Brad Katona versus Mr. We call this guy Mr. Mustache. I'm on a, <laughs> I'm on a nickname basis with him. He's an absolute savage, man. He's he's my favorite fighter. He's he's my boy, but uh, yeah, man, Brad Katona is the man. I'm picking Mr. Mustache though. I'm picking Mr. Mustache. Um, and of course we got all. Of course, you know we're not casuals over here. We got Ihor Bateria versus Sharad Magomedov. We got Big Tubby versus. D Rod, we got all the all the names, all the faces, but this guy is a freaking savage. He's a tough cookie, Mr. Mustache. I think he's pretty good. I'm not a casual. I know who that is. I know who it is. And I'll say his name right now. His name is Jesse Butler. Dude, Jesse Butler's a savage, man. Jesse Butler is an absolute savage. I think he's gonna beat. Um Yeah. I think he's gonna beat. Brad Katona. Casual. Let me, okay, all jokes aside, come on, bro. How you, come on. This dude's 0-1 in the UFC. You think I'm going to remember this motherfucker? <laughs> you think I'm going to remember this guy? He's literally 0-1. He's had one fight and he's lost. So I'm not a casual for not knowing him. I'm sorry, I do know him. I just call him Mr. Mustache. He's my boy. So I'm on a, a nickname basis. <laughs> so who would win at 185, Usman or Pereira? Thank you for the $2. Um, 
<sighs> I, I think it, it depends on which Pereira we're getting. Are, are we getting the Mikolaitis Pereira? Are we getting the Jan Blahovich 184? No, I'm kidding. Uh, I think uh, Pereira wins. I don't think Usman would necessarily be big enough to consistently take him down that much, but you never know. If, if it's at their prime, I'd maybe go with Usman, prime Usman, because I think he'd be good enough to take Pereira down, but... If it's like an older Usman, like the Usman that's been fighting Edwards, I would probably go with Pereira. Because I don't like Usman's ability to get finishes on the ground. And I think that Usman's legs against the best leg kicker in the game would be toast. And I think Pereira could knock him out with a left hook. I go with Alex. And Usman leaves himself open too. How far does Terrence McKinney go? Terrence McKinney, I don't think he goes that far. I don't think he's that great. So, yeah. Thank you for the two bucks. Shame Hamzat will never live up to the triple champ hype. Don't really see anyone being able to achieve that for the foreseeable future. I don't think anyone's ever going to get it. I don't think we're ever going to see the guy that I thought Hamzat was going to be. I don't think we're ever going to see a fighter that is the chosen one, the GOAT, that's just going to steamroll everyone at the top. The closest thing to it, though, is... Uh, Ilya Teporia. I mean, he's been smoking, guys. But it's a little bit different with grappling. It's just kind of cool... When you see someone do it with grappling, because a KO, okay, I can understand, like, he lands a really good shot. He's really technical. Uh, and he, he did kind of run through Volk in two rounds, even though it was competitive. He smashed him in the second. And he kind of easily got by Josh Emmett. But I'm talking about someone, like, just destroying all of his opponents with grappling early and, like, you know, smashing people with ground and pound shots and subbing people with ease. I don't think we're ever going to see someone with that level of grappling beat the top guys in MMA. I think it's too talented that the guys are too good these days for someone to have that much of a skill advantage. Islam Makhachev. Yeah, no, I understand Islam Makhachev, but he's not, he's not as dominant as I'm thinking. I'm thinking about Islam Makhachev running through Volk on the ground instantly. You know what I mean? I'm thinking of Islam Makhachev running through everyone in the first round like, it's nothing. Like, he was doing that to guys like Hooker. He was doing that to guys. And I, and I think he could do it to Dustin. I think he could do it to Dustin. But I'm talking about, I don't know, Islam doesn't have the same level of tenacity. He's also more patient. This does not mean that he's not good. That's not He's not amazing. It just means I'm thinking of a guy that has, like, the Hamzat aura where he runs out the gates and just finishes everyone easily. Aspinall is a guy that does it with his striking. I'm talking about a grappler. The reason why I can't say Makhachev is because he's too patient, right? Which is a good thing, but he's not got the same aura because of that extra patience. Aspinall is doing it with KOs. It's not the same. He's very good, though. He's very good. But yeah, I, I know what you mean. I'm just thinking Hamza had a different aura. I've never seen it before, but it's gone. Am I your favorite fighter, brother? Definitely my favorite fighter right now. Yeah, Shamil the Blob Gaziev. What is up? Thank you for the $2. I would say so. I would say so. Aspinall is actually that guy with the grappling too. True. I don't think he even wanted to finish Volkov on the ground. He took down Volkov. Volkov got back up, but Aspinall let him get back up so he could beat him up more on the feet. I think he could have finished Volkov within the first grappling exchange. So yeah. Aspinall is close to that level, but it's heavyweight, so it's not as crazy. Because, you know, heavyweight's not that great. Volkov is still plotty as fuck. If Bilal Muhammad doesn't get a title shot next against Leon Edwards, could you do a documentary about him having the most unfair UFC career? I could do a, a rant video about it. I'll definitely do a rant video. But yes, maybe I could do a doc, because I think a doc would be good too. Just to kind of dive deeper into like Dana White promising him title shots, never giving him the title shot. Hamzat is still that guy. No, he's not. He lost round two and round three to a guy filling in on short notice who was older, wobblestone, cobblestone knees, who we were saying Hamzat was going to run through when Usman was in his prime. So he's not. I'm sorry. Hamzat's not that guy. Listen, the two fights he's had with guys that are highly ranked, he's arguably almost lost so i don't think he lost to burns but it was close 
Shavkat's better. I think Shavkat is better too. I think Shavkat's a little bit higher level. What do you think were in the DMs between Cheeto and Sean? I have no idea. I don't know. Maybe it was a knockout. Maybe there was some footage of Cheeto getting knocked out. Something like that. I have no idea. I'm not sure. Yeah. But anyway, guys, I am going to get going and I'm going to do a member stream. So I will be making a video later on Charles and Armand, but it's time to do a member stream. So I will get going right now and maybe I'll do another stream later tonight. We'll see. Hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time.